Hey everyone, it's the middle of the week, so it's not time for weekly U.S. oil and gas data update just yet. And also for those who are waiting for the next set of uh, aviation videos and aircraft tracking videos, those are coming soon. In fact, I'm literally going to be recording the next one uh, right after I get off work tonight. For the moment, for this quick video, however, uh, I am going to briefly just talk about something that has... Uh, experienced quite a massive price upsurge over the last year or so, and that is lumber, or timber, or just wood, paper, products, whatever you want to refer to it as. It has gone over the past year or so from about $350 per thousand board feet, basically a, a, a thousand, it's priced in units of board feet, a thousand board feet is the unit, uh, it's about a thousand cubic feet of about an inch or two inches thick of wood. I don't know why they didn't just decide to price by ton uh, like they do with everything else, but whatever. So over the last year, lumber has gone from $350 uh, per thousand board feet up to, uh, most recently, it touched $530 per thousand board feet. And now it has settled back down at about $522. Uh, these are prices that uh, it has never seen before. So these are historically record-breaking prices, and these are coming about because of several factors. Now this past year, 2017, you may remember the uh, harsh wildfires, mainly in California, but there were numerous ones across the West Coast. Uh, California's lumber industry isn't as large as uh, Oregon and Washington's. It does have some, however, now quite a bit, uh, including some in Oregon and Washington, was uh, harshly damaged by those wildfires. Uh, numerous uh, tree farming areas were uh, very harshly damaged, and quite a fair amount of buildings and homes and places on the West Coast were also destroyed by those wildfires, uh, many of which either were made of wood or have a lot of uh, wooden components inside of them. So that's caused both a, uh, a mild drop in production and a sudden spike in demand on the West Coast at least. Now, also, if you remember from late summer of last year, we also had that, uh, that triple threat hurricane action. We had, you know, sort of just one after another coming in. Now, those uh, down in the southeast, where people don't typically think of a lot of lumber coming from, there actually are a lot of uh, tree farms down there. And quite a number of those suffered a fair amount of damage uh, from those storms, along with a fair number of structures in the southeastern U.S. being destroyed by those storms as well. So that also uh, damaged lumber supply and spiked up lumber demand because of the rebuilding necessary now. And as you may also remember, uh, this winter, much of the lower 48, including huge portions that are not used to uh, such temperatures and weather, uh, were gripped by extremely cold temperatures and uh, harsh winter conditions, by their standards at least, not by like Alaskan standards, but uh, by standards of especially the southern states, uh, they they were absolutely slammed. Uh, for example, the airport in my, uh, my parents' city down in South Carolina was closed for five days uh, because of two inches of snow. Now, it's hilarious to me, but to the people down there, it's terrifying apparently, uh, but that cold weather, especially down in the southern areas, also caused even more damage to lumber producing areas because a lot of the uh, plants in the south obviously are not uh, inherently used to dealing with temperatures like that, so they don't really fare very well. And also a lot of the uh, winter storms across the, uh, the primary 48 states caused a lot of uh, infrastructure damage and held up uh, roads and shipping routes and all that kind of stuff. So that also compounded into some more supply disruptions. Now, by all means, the, uh, the U.S. isn't the center of the universe and it's not the only lumber producer in the world. However, it is one of the largest, along with Canada and Russia. And Canada and Russia both actually, because of these supply disruptions in the U.S. throughout uh, 2017, actually kind of had to uh, really step up their game and actually start cranking out a, a fair amount more than they normally would be. Because aside from all this in the U.S., 
and the U.S. being where most of the supply disruptions of the lumber industry were, demand is continuing to surge across the world, despite since the 90s the use of regular, you know, paper or printing paper and newspapers and all that kind of stuff. That has been on the decline as everything is switched over to just being kept as data on electronics. However, tissues and toilet paper are still a thing. You don't blow your nose into your phone and you don't wipe with an email after you go to the bathroom. And so mainly most of the demand coming from India, given its massive population, rapidly modernizing and getting access to modern standards of living. However, plenty of other nations are also contributing India just providing the largest portion of the demand increase, basically because of sheer population numbers. However, formerly despondent countries rapidly rising up in living standards is creating a uh, increasing surge upwards in demand for tissue and toilet paper, and even just regular paper, as even though we're in the electronic age now, we do prefer also keeping a fair amount of hard copies of things as well. So. All the supply disruptions and demand spikes because of all the weather because of all the weather incidents in the US that we just discussed and all of the surging demand from all of these uh, other places around the world modernizing has all been culminating together to put lumber prices well on the way to doubling and and even if they don't entirely double from what they were a year ago uh, at least already breaking the ceiling of the highest point that they had ever reached before. And I assure you, it is quite visible, at least if you're like most of us and you have to carefully pay attention to the prices of things that you're buying because you don't have an infinite supply of money. I, in particular, have been really clearly able to notice. It hasn't been a harsh blow, it's just been noticeable and interesting to note that I previously, a year ago, could buy a 24 pack of toilet paper for five bucks. However, now it's almost about eight dollars. Like I said, not anything harsh. Just something that can be pointed out to where you can actually see the influence of these things happening in real time in your own personal life. So that's that for now. I figure maybe every other week or so I'll talk about a random commodity topic like this, but we'll see. That's it for the moment. More videos still coming this week, I promise you. Please like, share, subscribe, support on Patreon if you want. I have to get going, so I will see you all around next time.